Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Fed Day. Here we are, the day we've all been waiting for. The most important Fed Day since the last one and until the next one. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Stel. So, can I eat more than today? Because can you what? Can I eat more today? It's a fat day, you said. <laughs> yeah, you can eat as much as you like, mate. Um, I think that, that might be the best option for today. Yeah, Just uh, disappear, go to lunch and come back uh, 10 minutes before the Fed. <laughs> we used to do that when I was in, yeah. when I was in Japan. We, we went out the whole night and then came back for the Fed at no, no <laughs> o'clock in the morning. Still drink. That's the way to do it, mate. That's the way to do it. But uh, yeah, here we are. I don't know uh, how much talk, more talking we can do about it, but uh, we'll get our final thoughts uh, out for you guys and girls today. Hope you're all getting prepped for it yourself. Um, let's crack on through some of the headlines overnight uh, and the data we've seen uh, just to get the lay of the land. Uh, start with the PBOC. They're out with some of their uh, normal um I won't call them daily, but uh, commentary that they offer now and again. Um, nothing really new on policy, um, so no signals that they're going to be looking to ease uh, significantly further. Uh, they say um, that policy will remain accommodative, uh, the economy remains broadly on track um, and will remain relatively stable. Uh, they did say they will improve the market-oriented floating FX rate system. Um, which is something they have spoken about previously um, in terms of, of changing the model, going back to the, uh, oh, I can't remember what it was called. What was it called, Kay? The other month, they, they moved back to it. Some right. so because, I mean, Bran is trying to get into, and I'm, I was trying to look for a link to give to him. Uh, seems like uh, the our website is not showing the link. Do you have any link to put on the uh, on our uh, uh, our, uh, chat, in our chat room, perhaps. Sorry for uh, for that, Ryan. Uh, um, just that's all right. Um, yeah. It should be the same link. It's always the same link on yeah, the email. I, I can't give ours, right? Because um, no, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, that's what. Well, it's it's, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's the same link on on all the emails. The link doesn't change, so. It should be. He should have it bookmarked by now. He's been coming on here long enough. Okay, please, um, um, please go on, uh, Ryan. What, what was the question? Yeah, it, just about the um, PBOC and the the FX thing. They did something with a fixing, didn't they? I can't remember what they called it. Oh, the, it the, um, the, the, the counter -cyc counter -cyc hey guys, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Sorry, I, I was closing the door. Counter cyclical measures, Ryan. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Yeah, so, they can uh, use that to, to influence it the way that they really want. Um, and, and yeah, I, but, but I, I've, I've seen they, they put the fixing up again, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah I, I think there's just in a, in a gradual let uh, CNH weaken a little bit uh, um, um, scenario. Um, they, I, th I think they're, they, they're rather... Okay, there's this weak um, fundamental uh, fundamentals and data, but it, it seems to me that they are in a little bit of a preparation for when they will reopen uh, as well now. So you you add that to the uh, to what they are actually doing. Um, we could see the the Chinese yuan remain under pressure. Um, what I always use is there is there. Um, I always use their fixing as a measure. Um, if ever we start to close below and stay below, then uh, perhaps the, the, there's a chance of reversing this. But as long as we stay above and hold above, uh, any interventions that we've seen in the past have not held below their uh, fixing. So for now, um, I think uh, nothing's changed um, in, in their scenario. And, and um, I really think they are letting it uh, weaken gradually. And good morning, Stel. Good morning. By the way, Steve, I know I usually blame Steve, but this time it was his fault. He tried to correct the webinar hours because of the time change, and he did it two hours instead of one. So now I've, I've fixed it, and the, the, the widget is uh, visible on the site. Uh, yeah. I wrote on the, uh, on the chat as well. 
Good morning, everybody. Are we happy to be here finally, FOMC Day? Yeah, exactly. And, and just for those um, who, who come in via your emails and the link, the link is the same every day. Um, yes. It's not a different link every day. So if you come in via the link, bookmark your link. Um, so if you don't get an email for any reason or uh, if uh, Steve uh, <coughs> fucks it up, <laughs> uh, uh, you've, got the, you've got the link big bookmarked, uh, it doesn't change. Exactly. Um, I have four bookmarks on my uh, Chrome, uh, you know, fa uh, Flow Show, Face, Daily, uh, Morning Edge, Daily Roundup. And I just use those always. And Pornhub. And Pornhub. Yeah, of course. Of course, that too. Let's not forget about that. I was one of the founders, the seeders. Anyway. <laughs> oh, man. I want, right, today, please, right. I want today to be oh, over. <laughs> um, right. So... Uh, Back to uh, the one, um, there's been a couple of banks out this morning um, calling for 750 in Don Juan. Uh, Numura, I think, were the ones who went first earlier today, um, and City have now pumping uh, 750. Um, entirely possible, um, but it really does put us into some really high levels there. Um, I doubt it's going to be one way traffic, um, and uh, I'm sure Chinese authorities will be. Uh, marking some levels in there where they deem things to go too far if we continue to rally um obviously things could hugely change if we get confirmation um at all about easing of covid policies um on that we had the the, the rumors yesterday there's not really been anything to to add or take away from that um it's still all rumors there's not as far as i've seen there's not been any real denials or confirmations um but it's it's still unlikely to happen until um, the early part of next year before they even make those sort of decisions. So it's still probably in the uh, pinch of salt realm, should we call it. Um, right, the floodgates have been open in Japan. Um, tons of comments out from those guys. Um, a lot of stuff, pretty much as we already know. Um, there was a few news outlets making a bit of a, a thing of some comments from uh, Kuroda overnight um, and about the possibility of changing policy um, down the line. Um, a bit more made of the, the in the headlines and the actual comments. Um, he actually said, um, this was talking about changing policy on, on inflation, uh, that for now, I don't see the need to raise interest rates or make any modifications to yield curve control. Uh, and he was speaking in Parliament. Um, but if Japan sees prospects that inflation will head for 2% accompanied by wage hikes, a tweak to monetary policy will, of course, become necessary. Um, and as I say, the, some of the usual suspects in the, the media have made more of the headline in it than it actually sounds. He's pretty much stating the, bl the, the bloody obvious here. Um, they are still looking for wages to rise. They are looking for inflation to be more sustained. They still think it's affected by um, price pressures coming from things like energy, so temporary, transitory, whatever you want to call them. Um, and also, as far as Finance Minister Suzuki is concerned, um, he now says that... Um, oh, I've lost it now. Now, sorry, he now sees that a weak yen as half the reason for inflation going higher. Um, so a little bit made there of, of the headlines, but when you read into them, it's it's not really anything um, that noteworthy. But Suzuki now blaming half the reason for inflation um, on the weekend, maybe, you know, emphasises their point that they are looking at this really, really closely now. Um, but as he said, also said, um, with regard in yen weakness, it's it's more about the move, not the level. Um, as we've been stressing all the way through this, they don't put numbers on it. There, there may be times where businesses um, will put numbers on and say, you know, weakening past such and such a level is brings additional problems, um, and that will obviously influence um, what the MOF look at. Um, but it's still mainly about how the moves come around more than the levels they get to. Um, Kay, there was a ton of flood uh, of headlines uh, last night. Mm -hmm. You got any uh, pickings? 
Yeah, it, it's been a real avalanche, and and I was a bit surprised opening my uh, screens this morning and then uh, going on to the um, onto what's been happening overnight, uh, reading through the the the, the live uh, um night headlines, and it was an absolute avalanche. They haven't they haven't stopped the whole night. So what I make of it is that okay, I'm um, this. First of all, the line, the, the Suzuki lines, I, I would like to um, come back to those. So, as you say, he sees the weak yen as a partial cause of uh, the actual inflation, and he cannot tolerate uh, further sharp yen weakening driven by speculators. So, um, there, there is and a little bit of addition to it is that the weak yen has been causing uh, uh, part of, partially the inflation. We know that. We know that. Uh, from uh, what's what's happening in the euro as well, and uh, and the uh, ECB uh, reacting like a, a turtle lying on its back with its uh, four legs up in the air and not knowing what to do about it. Um, but um, it, it's a little bit of an addition. I, I found overnight that there's been a, a bit of additions to what um, has been said before. Um, then there was this Kuroda saying that. Um, Yen weakness is excessive, one-sided, and undesirable, and that's a not new, but um, both have been stressing that it's weighing now on the economy, um, and then um, so that that makes me think that we really have seen a lot of stealth intervention lately, and um, they are trying to buy time to uh, until the dollar may naturally reverse in some way perhaps they they buy time or they know um, they know well well enough that uh, if uh, if if the fed doesn't pivot if, and, and looking at the interest rate differentials looking at the trade deficits looking at the current account deficit in japan the dollar yen will explode you know, right they they know it so they are trying here now to buy time but then there's, there's another few um, lines and then I, I want to come back on what you said um Corona saying that um, they may tweak uh, the uh, the monetary policy if uh, we see the combination of higher inflation and wage hikes and that's that's where the whole thing uh, that's where the whole problem lies in Japan because they haven't seen any serious wage hikes for the past 20 years and it, every year it's the same debate come the uh, the new fiscal year March April we, we are going to see heavy debates uh, and and some ping pong games between the uh, Japanese manufacturers and uh, and the government, um, one pointing fingers at the other. Uh, but perhaps this time, I will say, uh, because never say never. Perhaps this time they have some kind of reason or buffer to um, to hike wages a bit more come uh, come the next fiscal year because of all those stimulus packages uh, coming from the government. So. Um, Time-wise, we, we may be looking at, um, at, at the end of the fiscal year, uh, when Corona will hand over uh, the baton to, uh, to his uh, uh, replacing person, um, we, we may perhaps see something, something change, but that still leaves us with uh, three, four months. And then um, there was this, and then the, the, the line where really that to me kills it at least is that uh, Suzuki said government finances will become very difficult if the Bank of Japan raises interest rates. <laughs> <That's weird. laughs> yeah. the, whole thing, <laughs> the whole thing that they have been saying for, and that was one of the last lines, right? So the whole thing that they've been saying for hours just got thrown out of the window. Um, no, but but really, um, no, uh, I think now there is. It, it's clear that they don't want the yen to weaken further, and they are, as I said, they are trying to buy time. So they are going to 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 throw money at it, right? Uh, that, that's um, that's now my kind of conviction. Um, I don't. I'm I'm not saying the yen will go down because all the fundamentals are still against the the, the Japanese yen right now. Um, we we are seeing um, energy uh, crude oil is is, is finding. Uh, Bids on uh, on on dips. Uh, the commodity sphere is is not uh, coming off uh, further. So and and with uh, with what is going on in Japan and the Japanese government watering down their own finances. I mean, all the fundamentals are still against the yen. But I, I'd be careful because if they succeed to drive the 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 speculators. Um, 
only half a way. Uh, I've, I've already said it yesterday. It's uh, trading stealth interventions is much more difficult difficult than uh, um, coming in at level, smashing it down 500 points, and then you know uh, you can buy it again, the dollar yen, uh, for instance. But um, what I say now is that um, the dollar yen, and then we are, we're looking ahead to the to the Fed and what may happen. Dollar yen may be a lagger if uh, if the other dollar pairs um, go up. So I'm a little cautious on what's going to happen with um, other yen crosses right right here and now. Um, things like uh, if ECB. Um, doesn't really succeed to prop up the euro, things like the euro yen, things like sterling yen, things like, I don't know, well, Chinese yuan yen, for instance, uh, could uh, uh, could dip uh, further. Um, so so that's a bit the um, mindset that I'm in right now. Um, it's it's tough to buy dollar yen when, when they are in it all the time, you know? Yeah. That, yeah that's, no, great. that's what I mean, really. Uh, yeah. Against, exactly. the fun, against actual fundamentals. Yeah, no, I agree with you entirely, and, and that's that's the basis why I'm actually, you know, over the longer term bearish uh, the dollar. Um, one, because I, I don't think the Fed can get any more hawkish than they are now, uh, based on the data. But two, um, there has, you know, if you're going to see a turnaround, and now we've obviously got the Bank of Japan intervening, the upside is becoming perhaps a little more difficult, even despite the trend that we're in. Uh, we've still got to respect the trend. Um, but that's why I'm a bit more bearish over over the dollar, and particularly dollar yen. I just think you might get more bang for your buck if you if you've got a short dollar bias um, in the dollar yen than, than perhaps other pairs. Um, but a, a question I want to ask, Kate: Would 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 Japan would the government have been better off rather than doing all this stimulus, just agreeing to wage rises? Um. No, because they're, they're already indebted, right? I mean, Japan owns, I, I don't know how, what's the percentages of its of its own, yeah. own debt, and they're already very much indebted. That, that's why we have been saying for years now that the Bank of Japan is, is or if, if well, okay, we then we have to talk about independence and, and stuff like that. But in Japan, independence is, is, is a vague uh, concept, right? Um, we know that Bank of Japan is, is uh, sponsoring the... the uh, the government debt and uh, and the internal yeah. debt and, uh, and and stuff. Um, but ra rather than rather than putting p money into people's pockets, which is what they're effectively doing with with the latest fiscal measures um, or some of the fiscal measures, you know, on energy and that sort of stuff, wouldn't it be better if they if they put it into wages, which would mean having to issue less debt, which would mean the BOJ having to buy less, and they achieve their goals of of getting inflation higher naturally. And putting money in, in the people's pockets, um, getting the companies to do it. Um, okay, that's going to be well. We need a whole show we, for that. <laughs> that. No, we we yeah, we need two shows uh, to to cover that. And um, but I'm going to um, to reply in just uh, one word. I hope um, demographics they they count. They're 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 screwed yeah. um, on the demographic side. I think they are uh, they're absolutely screwed. Uh, their demographics graphics are. Um, likely to be the the, the worst uh, deflationary scenario in in the whole of the developed world. So um, yeah. I, I think that's the really really short answer. But uh, otherwise, it's going to be an endless debate. Uh, but they they they're basically screwed. Yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe we'll save that uh, debate for our Christmas. Yeah, lunch. we could. Um, we could. Which, well, we, which, we we could do a, we could do a special. Uh, and I was already thinking about that, but we could do a special on 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 some countries when one day or another when uh, when the markets are when we don't have uh, a lot to talk about. Uh, yeah. In the rest of the markets. Yeah, definitely. And uh, for anyone in the uh, UK, you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, we've got a date penciled of December the sixteenth. Um, for a little bit of a meetup, if you're free, you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, we'll no doubt put up the details in the chat room uh, at some point. But uh, yeah, that's our Christmas due date. If you've got nothing planned, um, right? Well, let's crack on with some of the other stuff, and then we can get into the pricings. Um, Bank of Canada's Macklem was speaking uh, in Parliament, I believe, saying that inflation measures the bank watches have stopped their rapid rise, but are not declining. Um, he also admits that they should have hiked rates sooner. Um, bit of a no shit Sherlock 
comment there. Um, RBNZ Hawksby said they will consider tightening faster or slower uh, at the uh, next MPS um, or at future MPSs. Um, this was the central bank that uh, a few months ago said they only had two more hikes in them. Um, but and, wait a minute, did, did he yeah. eliminate, did he just eliminate the possibility of hiking at the same pace? That's important. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Sorry. No, good like point. This, good these point. kinds of, these kinds of comments point. which add zero value. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. Are, are you, are you on your surfboard right now still? No, why? <laughs> I, I'm not just just wondering. <laughs> tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, I'll be on the uh, on the catamaran. That's a different uh, story. Oh, it's still really to... nice and warm here. Anyway, carry on. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's uh, again the RBNZ was supposedly only got two hikes left in them. Um, it looks like they're going to keep going. Uh, anyway, um, ECB's Nagel said there's still there's still a long way to go on hikes, uh, and the ECB must be more stubborn than stubborn inflation. Um, typical German comments there uh, on inflation, um, very hawkish, uh, Nagel is. Um, ECB to cost said that progress on unwinding accommodation is significant, so I, the discussion on QT is uh, gaining pace, it seems. Um, the, the ECB are one bank that like to make a simple uh, process complicated. We know they're going to do QT. Just tell us when they're doing it and when the dates are and what the numbers are. Don't keep faffing around with, oh, we, we have some discussion. We've not had a lot of discussion. We've had a great amount of discussion. We don't, no one gives a monkeys. Just tell us when it's coming and how much it's going to be. And until then, keep your trap shut. Um, but anyway, the market is, has got a lot of focus on this QT stuff from the ECB. Um, the cost also says that nobody knows how far the ECB will have to raise rates. Um, Again, we've been talking about this, where is the ECB's terminal level, their ceiling, where's their neutral level? It all seems a bit lower um, than everyone else, um, which, as I've been saying, is, is a risk um, that they'd be forced to go higher than even they expect. I still think that uh, is going to be the case. Um, we did have some uh, fun and games yesterday from the White House. Um, Bernstein was, was out with a comment and he said that Biden endorses a Fed policy pivot. And the market uh, went a little bit uh, raggedy on that. And then we got a correction after saying that he actually meant the Fed pivot to hawkish um, this year rather than a pivot to dovish, um, which they obviously haven't done. So that was uh, fun and games late last night in the, the chat room when those, uh, those dropped down. Um, Reuters did a poll of FX analysts and 30 out of 44 said that the dollar is likely to reclaim or surpass its recent highs. Um, so a lot of uh, dollar balls, uh, it seems, in the FX market at the moment. Um, and uh, those are the sort of guys that I'm going to be looking to fight um, with my bearish dollar bias um so i like it if they're all singing the same way um because their accuracy is uh, pretty rubbish most of the time um just gonna crack a look at the data um obviously yesterday's data we had some moves around um we had the ism which came in relatively soft in some aspects strong in other aspects um the ISM itself came in um, above expectations, 50.2, um, although it did confirm the drop on last month. Um, I was expecting it to do much worse, actually, as, as I may have mentioned, um, and it, it blew that out of the water. But we have seen some metrics that are going to cause a bit of a problem for the Fed. The prices component, 46.6, a uh, quite significant drop there was expected to, to rise, so dropped well into contraction. And then employment went back into expansion, 50.0 versus uh, 48.7 prior. Missing expectations, but still an expansion. So two numbers, one inflationary going the right way for the Fed, the other one, jobs going the wrong way for the Fed. Um, this has been the continuing theme. We, we're seeing weaker data um, weaker components in terms of new orders, activity, that sort of thing. 
but the uh, the bits that the Fed want to see are still not all moving in unison. Um, now, in one sense, it begs the question, can they engineer inflation getting back to target without actually collapsing the jobs market and causing more pain um, than they need to, i.e. a crash landing rather than a soft landing? Um, and I think the longer this goes, the more chance they may have at doing that, at least from the employment standpoint. Um, if we continue to get strong employment numbers, but we start seeing inflation coming down, that's the that's the goals really met um, for the Fed or getting close to being met. So I've been one that says a, a crash landing is the most likely outcome. Um, I still think the effect of rate hikes is still to be fully seen. So I still think there's problems to come. But so far, the data is saying that um, the soft landing may still be in play. Um, and while the data says that, we've got to respect it. But after that, we've got the jolts numbers, um, which showed a surprise jump in job openings. Um, now, a lot of people were looking at the, the ratio between these openings and um, the amount of people unemployed. Obviously, if you've got 10.7 million job openings and you've got 5.735, I think, uh, million unemployed, why aren't these people getting those jobs? Um, and so people are looking at this ratio of how many people are unemployed versus how many openings are. Now, again, this number is not going the way the Fed want to see it. If people are firms are struggling, they're not going to be um, putting out adverts for jobs. They're not going to be seeking taking on people because, you know, their margins are getting squeezed uh, or whatever. And that's how the demand drop comes that the Fed are looking for. But it seems that these job openings are rising, um, which doesn't suggest people are cutting back. That, again, is going the wrong way for the Fed. They don't want to see that uh, effectively. So there's still a bit of an imbalance in the jobs market. It's going to get very messy. We've got the NFP coming up um, on Friday. We've got the ADP today. Uh, is it today or tomorrow? I've lost track. Today. Let me it shouldn't be today. today. It's today. Yeah, it's today in uh, roughly an hour and 15 minutes. Um, so that will give us our first look at the jobs numbers. Um, and keep an eye on that data because it could change some short-term expectations for tonight's Fed. But anyway, that was the data from the US, a bit of a, a mixed picture in terms of the Fed. Today we had um, the, la the finals and some other PMIs uh, data in Europe. Um, there was some German data as well trade balance showing a decent bounce 3.7 billion but look at the actual numbers a drop in activity in both metrics um, that to me is more important than the trade balance that exports were down and imports were down um, so that's showing real potential problems for Germany as we well know um, potentially heading for recession into uh, Q4, Q1 um, so activity overall was down so that's the, the take from that um, Spain, PMI down as well, really dropping into contraction. Italy doing the same, France doing the same, Germany doing the same. So here we are again with the data all slipping back, um, for pulling into these uh, uh, recession fears that we're seeing around the grounds. Whew, that was quite a lot for this morning. You guys got anything uh, you want to add to the mix? Not in terms of data, not in terms of data and news. Uh, no, worries, mate. Uh, no, not really. No, I uh, don't know if Ryan, if K Man has anything to say, but hey, you, anything, uh, you know, at all that, mate. You, you other... do a splendid job of covering stuff, really. You do. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you very <laughs> much. Yeah, no, you, you covered everything, mate. We're going to talk cool. about the Fed today. Yeah, we're going to talk about the Fed. Don't worry. We're just uh, summarizing what happened overnight and, no, data Mike. and stuff. Yeah, uh, Mike, the, the, what Fed? <laughs> what is there a Fed today? No. <clears throat> today, oh, fat F A T. Fat. Oh, the fat. Yeah, we'll deal with the fat. Um, All righty, let's go. Yeah. Um, so Gavin just said German banks have been downgraded to negative by Moody's and Italy too. Oh, look at that. Now, if that would have been the UK, cable would probably trade in one ten by now. Um, but I look at the euro; it's probably going up. Um, which, in fact, it did on the. Uh, on some of the data this morning. So it just shows what people are trading on the on the euro. Um, right, so let's crack into the Fed then. Um, I'll 
start first and I'll, I'll bring Stell in. Um, right, my overall position at the moment is I'm looking to fade dollar strength. Um, I'm not going to be too concerned about what the actual finer details come out tonight. It's only if the bigger picture changes. Trading-wise, yeah, I'll be looking for, for the snipes and the scouts, depending on the headlines and, and whatnot. Um, but really, I'm positioned short dollar yen already. I'm looking to add. I'll add all the way up to the highs, up to those 151, 152 highs, if seen. And I'm playing this more for a longer term. So I'm, I'm looking for the Fed to potentially give me better levels. Um, my main meeting is the DEC FOMC and the DOTS, um, because that's where I think the most important action will lie, whether the ceiling changes or not. Um, I'm not looking to, to chase this lower. Um, but in trading terms, the 145 area is, has to be a consideration. Um, if you're trading just the range, um, you know, that's, that's a big, pretty big line in the sand down there. It was the former resistance area for quite a while. Um, so if we get a, get a move under there, that could be significant. So from a short-term play, that's why I'll potentially be looking for longs. Um, not so much for a break trade if it does go lower, but it depends on how it's driven. Uh, on the upside, shorts, you can you can take your pick um, from here all the way up to the highs. Probably looking at most of the tickets seems to be around the, the half numbers and the, the big figures. Um, so that can, can be your rough guide. That'll be my rough guide, um, at least that this one is concerned. Um, the only other dollar position I'm in, um, apart from uh, dollar Hong Kong shorts, um, is Aussie dollar longs been long this uh, for a few weeks now down to uh, 61.99 um i'm not looking to add on any dips though i might play the 62 level if seen um just for short term play my view here is i'm more likely to play a break of that 65 20 40 area um both for a short term break trade and maybe to fold some into the core long position if we do get a break up there I might start to chip a bit off uh, profits uh, if we get up to that 50 fib and the, the 66 50 area um, just to start putting some in the bank. Um, but if you're looking at something like euro dollar, I'm really going to be picky on this. Um, I'm not going to be looking to trade this one unless we get something down to these lows. If we get a really big hawkish noise out of the Fed, um, something that really changes the picture. These are the, these are the areas down to 95s, 96s that uh, I'm going to be watching because if we do get a really hawkish red, but we can't break those levels, that's going to really signal that we've got a potential bottom in play uh, for Euro dollar. That's what will get me interested in in grabbing some longs for the for the longer term. Short term, the levels are there. We know what the levels are down into 98s considerations up to these highs in uh, the 100s 101s maybe it's going to take something to get us up to here the 102s that'll be your next area i don't see anything coming from the fed today that's going to bust us out of these ranges um so if you're looking to play the short term pick your short term edges know where you're going to likely to play play the stretch points you know if, if the fed isn't too hawkish isn't too dovish um but we get a decent move think about where the market might get stretched and use those levels. You know, you're probably looking 100, maybe 150 pips. Those are the sort of areas either side. If the picture isn't really changing, then these ranges are likely to hold. And that's what you need to lean against uh, for things like that. So, Stel, I know uh, you've got uh, your eye, as usual, on the metals over the Fed. Um, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts and, and what are you looking at? Um, I, well, as I wrote on the chat, I am... Um... I don't expect Powell to be dovish, uh, but if there is any kind of dovish shift, and I do mean something that's, um, you know, how do you define significant? I can't, but, you know, it's going to be a, a, a call that I'm going to make at the time. But if he's not hawkish, I'm just going to go and buy silver and platinum wherever they are trading. Um, not in full size yet, but uh, I'm going to start um, accumulating. Um, having said that, I, as I said before, I don't think he's going to be dovish. I think he's going to probably say a little bit of the same and um, and the markets probably go lower. Um, it's it's a tough one. And, you know, I was, I was um, watching a video 
earlier today of uh, an interview of um, Fed guy Joseph Wang and uh, Timmy Rouse, uh, Timmy Leakes. Um, I can't remember who the host was, but it was on uh, it was on YouTube uh, done a few hours ago, and they both said one thing which I found surprising. They both said, "Yeah, you know, the Fed is going to keep going," and really, the consumer is doing very well. There's a lot of cash. Um, sloshing around the system. Look at the available cash balances on on bank accounts. They're higher than they were, you know, three years ago due to the pandemic and due to the um, uh, the, the checks that were deposited basically on people's accounts. And that I, I, that's struck me as kind of odd because we all know that disposable income is dropping. You know, everything is more important. Wages are not keeping up. Rents are not dropping yet. So disposable income is down. So. Okay, yes, there is a little bit more cash because there was an injection and people saved more during the pandemic. But this is so temporary. This is going to go away. It's the same as when people say, oh, we're releasing a strategic petroleum reserves. This is really bad for oil. It's a very temporary thing. Every time they release the reserves, you see it goes down, and then it goes straight back up. It's a, it's exactly the same like when the uh, BOJ intervenes. Yes, there is an, you know, a short-term uh, reaction and then it just goes straight back up. So for me, if I was the Fed and I was looking at that, I would say, you know, this is not good. This is the people are going to go through the last of their savings now. So what happens next? So, um, you know, I, I find that a weak argument for the Fed to be hawkish. Uh, but having said that, I do think the Fed is not going to change yet. But that's not the that's not the reason why. I, I think the reason why is that they're just hell bent on bringing inflation down and um, all the lagging indicators you know uh, inflation and um, unemployment and all that they're still okay uh, but leading indicators are, are dropping but uh, inflation is not so as long as that's the case they don't have a reason to to stop yet so that's my view on on the fed today yeah no i, I agree with that entirely mate just before and, and it, I is hand about, it, it is sorry to interrupt it is about credibility for power by mike you're yeah. absolutely right yeah yeah Hundred um, percent. Just before I, I hand it over to Kay, uh, C. Northheimer said that the immediate market sentiment, based on interpretation, will drive the short-term movements. Later, the trend will start. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, <clears throat> and and for the Fed, I've been watching this, um, in particular the the two-year yield, just to see as an indication of whether the market is too hawkish, too dovish, or roundabout neutral going into um the fomc and it, <clears throat> excuse me it's sitting right on uh, on the neutral line excuse me um so four and a half percent is is where we're expecting the fed to get to four and a half five percent so while something like the two years is sitting right on that area i don't see the market as too hawkish or too dovish um which makes the price risk probably a bit binary going into it um i.e he could the, the price might move an equal amount effectively depending on whether he's hawkish or dovish or stays the path or whatever. Um, Kay, what are you uh, looking at, mate? Yeah, I'm, I'm still, I've just put the link of the interview um, on the... Uh, oh, in awesome. The, in awesome. the chat here, it's uh, Jack Farley, you, uh, you're yes. talking about the guy who was interviewing yes. Joseph Wang about uh, every... Two minutes um but uh, yeah he's <laughs> but uh, timmy leaks is there but you know timmy leaks is so october right we have a new one uh, it's um Gina. don't give the secret away don't give the secret away oh we've just... got a new one we've got a new one um yeah, we've got a new, one. <laughs> a new uh, fed whisperer is in town um yeah what what i'm looking at today is well, I, I could say nothing really. I, I I don't. Oh, do you want me to take the the screen? Yeah, go ahead, mate. Okay, hold on one sec because I had the window open on um, on the uh, on on our uh, stuff here. So let me. Okay, here we go. Right. Um, I've just put on the the, the dollar yen, but I, I'll. Um, I'll talk about what I what I'll be looking at in uh, in uh, in the FOMC today. Um, basically, nothing. I, I don't think that uh, Jay Powell is going to change anything. We're going for seventy five. Um, already in the last <clears throat> in the last um, uh, statement, um, they talked about uh, data dependency. I think they they are just going to keep it, and because we've got 
uh, a load of data coming out between uh, today and the next uh, FOMC, under which two labor reports. So that that's to me going to be very very important to watch what the uh, labor reports are going to do because that would be a, a turn there would uh, for sure uh, um, make them really think and. Uh, get a few uh, sweaty palms uh, before they pin down the next uh, rate move um, um, after this one. But for today, I think he will try to very, very, um, try very hard to avoid to say much. That That's my base case. So um, what guidance is covered? I think data dependent. Um, the next rate moves, we will see what, what it will be. Uh, but for now, I, I think he will also say that the data don't warrant uh, a slowdown so far. Um, then there's going to be the, the, the QT bit. I think uh, they are an autopilot there because um, so far there has not been uh, any accidents, although, uh, and, and that's where to me, the kicker of the day may, be, may come from, is that we've seen <coughs> Yellen comment on uh, possible liquidity issues in the, in the treasury market, in, in, the, in the market itself. So um, that to me will be, if, if anyone would uh, be so clever enough to ask him the question to comment on it, uh, even if he, he, he could go uh, no comments, um, I think that that may be somewhere a, a kicker in today's uh, meeting. So that's um, my personal view on uh, what may happen in uh, today's FOMC. Uh, no, no pivot, no, uh, uh, no nothing of the likes in, in my opinion. And, uh, and I know I'm probably going to be the slower one of uh, the FA community of uh, of, of looking for uh, for a possible pivot. Um, right, let's uh, talk about the dollar yen in um, stuff that I'm uh, going to be look at looking at. So what I was saying this morning in the chat, and I will just repeat that, um, is that um, uh, afterwards the 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 avalanche, the deluge of uh, of comments from the Japanese officials, if ever. And again, it's not my base case. If ever we see a dovish kind of Fed, this could be the one that really moves the fastest because they have been really, really leaning on it, um, and, uh, and and they've been trying to to force uh, a halt to um, to the dollar yen right now. Uh, of course, we know they they talk about volatility and stuff, um, but they and and they did actually respect what they said. The one forty eight uh, eighty eighty five. Was uh, uh, was three hundred pips above the, the the prior intervention and stuff. So then, and they came back in, but uh, leaning on it with with stealth interventions, uh, as I said, is is more difficult to trade. So this one, if ever today we get a dovish tilt, a real dovish tilt, this could uh, uh, put pressure on uh, the one forty five and a half, and then. To me, uh, I've already been saying that. To me, the do or die level is going to be around here, the one forty four three quarters. If if that goes, that's um, there's going to be bad news for the uh, for the dollar yen. Um, yeah, uh, see, Northheimer a fifty BPs hike would drop the 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 dollar yen. That's for sure. Uh, I mean, because seventy five BPs is uh, is baked into the cake. <clears throat> um, and on and in turn, if we would get no change. Since BOJ is in uh, 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 MOF, uh, but via BOJ are going to be in the market on on really uh, on sharp jumps, I reckon this one could be a laggard, and that's where um, I'm coming to um, what may be my secondary trade if we if we see um, a kind of hawkish, neutral to hawkish. Um, uh, FOMC, which would send the the dollar back higher. I'm going to be looking at uh, at yen crosses uh, because I I still expect the MOF and BOJ to slow moves. So this may be a hawkish FOMC today. May actually weigh on uh, on on uh, yen crosses. That is that is my secondary ID of uh, um, going into this uh, into this FOMC. So we're seeing here the euro yen. Um, it's been it's been starting to 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 cap and go back down. Of course, helped by uh, by the interventions, but also um, partially helped by what um, 
the the ECB is, is being so unclear about uh, what their next uh, moves may be, and uh, and today's PMI be, PMI is coming in weaker. So this is going to be um, something that I'm going to to look at after looking at uh, dollar pairs. Um, keep an eye on this one. One forty five uh, is is where uh, we play ball or not. It's trading one forty five and a half. Small bit of support perhaps here on prior lows, but. Um, if if this 145 would break um, tonight, um, I, I think there's probably a case of going to 200, 250 points lower over time. Um, that is one thing. Um, the other one uh, is is going to be sterling yen. It's a little uh, messy, my chart, I know, but uh, I know where my mess is, so uh, I don't care about uh, the others. So we are... Um, could be a, a little bit of a flag, but uh, this is starting to look a bit uh, a bit odd. Tomorrow we've got uh, also BOE, so this is what I'm going to really uh, pay close attention to um, for the combination of what we are going to see on FOMC and uh, and BOE tomorrow. Um, we've seen a bit uh, a bit lower highs. We've seen uh, uh, it supporting here. Um, as I said, could be a flag, but if we start to no, this is cable. Sorry, I'm. Uh, I had to go on Sterling Yen, which looks pretty much similar. Um, no, okay, this is Sterling Yen. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so we have seen we this, as I said, could be uh, could be a bit of a flag as well. But um, I'd, I'd be looking at uh, one sixty eight sixty one sixty eight forty. This is one um, that's going to be important in my uh, in my opinion. And then the big zone here is 167, 50, 60. So this is one uh, that I'm going to really pay very close attention to. If you would get some negative vibes, that means uh, uh, quite hawkish on the uh, on the FOMC, and then perhaps BOE, which is still a possibility, uh, underwhelmed tomorrow. Um, so keep an eye on uh, this. Is one that I'm going to uh, keep a very close eye on. Um, I like still looking at the metals and stelios. Um, I'm first of all going to silver. Yay! Um, yeah. <laughs> so yesterday, yesterday we had um, we had a bit of a test of this uh, lower uh, lower channel top, uh, broke above, but then uh, failed at 20, 20 bucks, and now we are back inside just. So, and I know um, that you are looking at this very, very closely, and I am with you on this one. If we would get a dovish tilt, I think we are uh, we could see quite quickly a move back to twenty one bucks. What do you think? I think so too. Reaction. I think so too. And for me, the um, the line in the sand to turn very, very bullish is uh, a break above that trend line, so twenty one forty or something like whatever that is. But yeah, I I, th I think you're right. If we do get the dovish tilt, we're getting towards twenty one bucks, which is not that much, right? It's a buck and a bit. Yeah, <laughs> um, and in but silver we're gonna we get can do that. In, in in percentage wise, it's a it's a pretty big move, but in silver we can easily do that, right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I agree 100%. But oh. again, as I said before, we have to be patient. I'm not uh, pulling the trigger yet, and they really have to change their rhetoric for me to to go ahead. Mm. Um, the, the, would you catch a knife if today we go, let's say, to in this zone here, 18, uh, 35, 50? Would, would you be tempted to catch a knife? Because I'm, I'm half having the idea that if we see a, a move down there, um this 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 may be in in a in a reaction to a non dovish let's say fomc this may be a level to um to 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 try and catch a knife personally could, but i don't know what what do you think could be with a very tight stop but really if the fed this uh continues to be hawkish i think we're going to take out the lows at 17 and a half so i, I wouldn't really try that uh, obviously it could it could hold but it's going to be for a very short trade short term trade with very defined um stops and i you know i i'm not a day trader so i i probably mm. wouldn't do it but i think it's it's not a bad idea it's not a bad mm. idea as long as you have the, your stop at the right place yeah uh, either here or on the or on the red line uh me thinking um which comes down from a bit longer i know it's been crossed uh, a lot of times but uh we get it down here below 18 bucks that that would give like a quite clear stop loss level clearer than 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 here for instance um 
Yeah. Um, any ideas on on gold? I'm I'm not watching plati platinum, so I'm I'm. If you want to share anything, please do. But um, you're looking at anything in gold? Uh, gold looks weaker to me than silver. I mean, we're very close to the 1614 lows, and as I've said so many times before, if we do get a hawkish Fed or a, or a unchanged Fed, basically, from what they've been telling us, I think those are going to go. Mm. So for me to change my view, we're going to have to get a dovish Fed, and we have to get above that, those previous um, lows, which is also the 23.6 FIB that you have there. So uh, 1679, I think, was a level or something like that. If we get above that level, oh, sorry, 1689. 1679, 17. I can't remember. Yeah, that, that yeah. one. 1689. They, they call it 1890, right? 16, yeah, 1890. Remember, remember that range? Yeah, that, that range we, yeah. we tried so many times to break. Well, that's the new resistance. If we get above that, then uh, I think we're off to the races. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, keeping an, I'm keeping an eye on that one. If, well, if, if I've got enough eyes for tonight, because um, that 1617 area um, on mine is the, is the 50 fib. I, I might show it quickly when. Uh, when we come back, um, that's the 50 fib of the uh, 2018 swing up, August 2018. Ah, from here. That one there. That's the 50 fib. Um, yeah, I have it from uh, from here, so it comes in uh, comes in a lot lower. Um, 1562 on, on my side. Okay, thanks. Um, I, I'm looking at the clock. It's already uh, we're already advancing uh, quite quickly. Yeah. Um, just yeah, let me look. Huh? No, you crack on, mate. Yeah, just just let me look quickly at dollar China. I think um, the, today um, PBOC fixed above seven twenty one, and uh, the channel uh, comes in there as well. So uh, I'm uh, I'm, afraid, I'm I'm going to be leaning against uh, that one. And then the the last bit is um, if we get a if we get an okay Fed, nothing really dovish. Um, since I'm still not a big fan of the euro, um, I think uh, those, some of those euro pairs could suffer a little bit more. So that's what I'll be looking at uh, today as well. Uh, give me a rebound into the mid 60s or 1970, 75 on, uh, on, on euro mix. I may give it a try as well. Or break below um, the prior low around 44, 45, I may, I may do as well. And I'm giving it back to you, uh, Ryan. Yeah, thanks, mate. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, just to just that was my. Let me get it on the shares. E. Um, this has been my view of gold. Um, that was my fib from uh, this this proper swing up um, here. That's the fifty fib that I've been keeping an eye on. I think we're in the zone for a potential nothing too hawkish, nothing too dovish type Fed. Um, you know, forty odd bucks away, thirty five bucks away. I think that might be a, a decent stretch point. Um, to look at, you know, fading uh, any move down there. My zone up here is the 75.85, you know, still stretching it to 90. Everyone's got a different pencil on this one. Um, but that's my that's my zonal view of that area up there. Um, as you can see, it's been uh, quite a sticky one. Held as uh, resistance on the last attempt there. Um, now, just in case you weren't aware, um, the prices for the platform the forex analytics platform have gone up um, but you can still get a discount uh, if you come via forex flow um, you can still get a 20 percent discount off the life of your subscription if you want to come and join us in the chat room um, i'll pop the link in there for you now um, there's obviously going to be a lot of uh, coverage of the fed um, this is one of the great things about the chat room um, over these events um, a lot of input coming from a lot of good people, a lot of good sources. And it's not all fluff and, and stuff you're not going to understand. People have got a good hand of what's going on and particularly the reaction to the Fed, um, you know, in the, the seconds and minutes right after. There's there's plenty of people in there who, who can guide you, like Kay, like Stell, Blake, um, a lot of the other traders in there who have got a good handle of what happens. So if you want to be somewhere where you can take good advantage of what the Fed is going to do and you're not left staring at a screen wondering what's happening. Um, something like our chat room is, is where you'll get that advice and information. Um, and also don't forget the good old traders funding program, um, which you can take advantage of here. If you want to upscale your trading, um, trade other people's money for limited risk, uh, then check out the link there. 
Um, I know a few of you guys in there uh, have come in it, brands in the TFP. Um, I know a lot of other guys uh, on the Flow Show here have, are in it as well. So take a look at that. As I say, you can upscale your trading, get an account. Your risk is only the assessment fee. Um, so if you pass the assessment, let's say you've, you've got a $50,000 account. Let's say there's a black swan event, something happens, you don't trade well, you blow it up. Um, all you've lost is the evaluation fee. You're not liable for any of the losses. Um, it's good for anyone trading in the States um, because it uh, allows you to get around the FIFO rules. So, you know, you can cut positions, add positions. Uh, you don't have to uh, first in, first out your positions there. So you can take advantage of that. And also that gives you access, free access uh, for varying periods, depending on which account you take, free access to the Forex Analytics platform. And at that point, we shall call it a day. Um, thank you, as always, for coming to the Flow Show. Thank you to Kate and Stell, as always. Please trade safe tonight, if you're not sure. Sit on your hands, let the dust settle, pick up the pieces afterwards. Um, don't want to hear any horror stories. Um, but I want to hear some good stories tomorrow. So we'll have, a, we'll have a talk about it, how you got on. Let us know your trades, how you got on tomorrow afterwards. Um, but, yeah, good luck. Stay safe. And uh, thank you to the two guys as well. Great, safely. Thank you. See ya.